Excellent. Is Great that first working? Well done. Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Over to you. All right. Well, I'll kick in. Um, my name's Mike Davidson. Um, I'm a specialist engineer in the DR. That's the Distributed Energy Resources Integration Team um, uh, 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 in the Future Energy Systems um, Group of uh, the Australian Energy Market Operator. Um, just look through the slides. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country uh, throughout Australia that AMO um, uh, 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 resides in um, and recognise uh, their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. And we pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. And I can say that I'm presenting from Strathalban in, in sunny South Australia um, uh, at, in uh, right next to uh, Lake Alexandrina and the only thing we don't have that you appear to have is a giant Murray cod and I really want one so let's see if we can get um, okay let's say a bit about the national electricity market um, uh, we've got there's a population of nearly 23 million um, connected to um, to uh, the east coast grid um, we also op operate the West Coast grid, which is about 10% of the size of the total market. So um, 11 million, million electricity customers um, and uh, around about 71 gigawatt hours of generation capacity on, on the system. Uh, and that includes um, uh, a rapidly increasing uh, penetration of roof, rooftop solar capacity at uh, 20 gigawatts, which is... Um, in world standards, uh, um, right, the leading edge, some would say bleeding edge. Um, this this represents the growth in variable renewable uh, energy. Um, variable renewable energy is um, uh, renewable energy that is uh, uh, subject to the vagaries of the weather. Um, and the, the fuel uh, for, for VRE is the weather itself. Uh, so you can see here... Um, um, a, a, a massive increase in uh, wind and distribution, uh, uh, sorry, uh, utility scale um, uh, uh, solar generation, uh, but also alongside that, a huge investment by um, end users and customers of, of the grid in um, generation resources on, on, on their own premises. Um, and that, that's uh, really where Australia leads the world. Hey. You can see here that investment broken down by um, by state. Um, uh, New South Wales is the leader in terms of volume. Um, uh, SA is the by far the leader in terms of per per capita investment, um, uh, with the highest um, per capita uh, uh, rooftop solar generation figures in the world. Um, and this is how um, the uh, growth has um, played out in the national electricity market in total. Um, and you can see here, I put this slide up just to show that um, the minimum demand um, in, uh, in any given year is the same as the peak demand two years ago. It's, it's, and, and that has sustained for quite a period of time. This is something that's not going to slow up. It's a, um, a, a massive investment by um, Australian uh, householders uh, and also a huge change in the way that the grid um, is operated. And you can see here um, uh, where this uh, DPV is, is uh, concentrated. Uh, you can see here in As Adelaide, it's got the highest um, uh, penetration. Um, might not be the biggest numbers, but certainly the highest penetration. Um, and there you are in Melbourne, uh, you, you, uh, cl clearly a large investment in, in the... Um, oh, we lost the slides. Is no, somebody... I can still see the slides. So maybe in the, maybe it's you, not us, or I think keep, keep talking. Keep going. Now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep, so you can see there that there's a, um, a, a very large... Um, uh, penetration of uh, uh, distributed uh, photovoltaics in in the Melbourne CBD area, but also in some of the regional towns as well. Um, and this is what the, um, that that DPV is doing to the shape um, of 
the, the electricity demand. You can this this here is um, representation of what what's called the duck curve, um, and you can see here the belly of the duck and the head of the duck and the beak, um, and and it's that energy there uh, that's been uh, taken off grid um, and is being supplied by um, uh, generation assets in the distribution network. Um, and in South Australia, which is um, uh, the um, canary uh, in the coal mine for all this uh, on a global uh, basis, you can see here that that has happened to such an extent that um, demand in the state has gone negative. And what that means is that um, all um, uh, demand in South Australia at, at, at certain times when con conditions um, are favourable is met by rooftop PV. Now, um, a, few, a decade ago, um, <laughs> a few decades ago, um, uh, 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 people would have said that was absolutely possible and you could only get 5% um, DPV generation. Um, uh, uh, the, you know that that, that you know it's it's quite a remarkable change uh, in the way that the, the grid is operated. Now you you might be saying, well, this is um, this is a um, a, uh, a seminar about EVs, not DPVs. Um, but I'll I'll make the I'll join the dots at the end. Um, so here's the SA minimum demand record. Um, and you can see here that um, uh, DPV, which is this light uh, yellow area, um, is, is, uh, exceeds um, state demand. And at this point, electricity has been uh, exported to um, Victoria. And you can see as well that at this time, uh, DPV has pushed out all other um, forms of generation. Um, because at, at this point, um, as soon as uh, DP, DPV starts generating, the price goes negative because there's an excess um, uh, of, of generation uh, over demand. Um, and um, what that represents is a, is a really valuable opportunity for charging EVs. So what, what you have is uh, clean energy. Uh, it's uh, locally supplied um, and it... Um, it is uh, at uh, record low prices. So, um, in fact, your uh, the market pays for you to consume it. So, this is what South Australia looks like, um, and this is what uh, Victoria currently looks like. This is the minimum demand day um, in Victoria, which is uh, October last year, um, and you can see here there's still a significant am amount of um, uh, coal generation, um, and essentially. Um, uh, the uh, all the other forms of generation are, are being squeezed out between DPV, uh, which is invisible to us as a grid operator, um, and it and is by and large not controllable um, either. Um, uh, it, so uh, DPV and uh, coal at its minimum generation level uh, squeezed out every other form of generation in the marketplace. Now, what, why is that important for um, uh, for DPV? Uh, sorry, EVs is that um, EVs represent a massive opportunity to um, absorb that um, solar generation. Um, without um, uh, uh, without that energy being um, absorbed and used, um, uh, uh, AMO and the DNSPs are going to have to increasingly um, uh, switch off and curtail the generation of uh, rooftop PVs, which is really not um, uh, not a desirable outcome. Um, so what we would like to see as a system operator is for um, EVs to um, uh, soak up that solar energy. Um, and, uh, you know, referring to Elliot's um, presentation earlier, uh, you know, what he was saying was that um, uh, the, there's, there's there's a real science to um, designing the charging infrastructure um, so that um, uh, you match the EV uh, charging regime uh, with uh, the the um, time uh, that the, um, uh, the the vehicle is being parked. Um, I, as as a representative of the system operator, I, I would encourage um, councils to really, really um, uh, facilitate and accelerate 
design of infrastructure and charging so that vehicles are charged during the day um, so that um, people ca can um, directly um, receive uh, uh, excess uh, generation um, from from uh, uh, distributed resources, um, so that what we've got is 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 load and resource uh, load and generation co located. The alternative to that is that um, uh, you have a, a car that sat in a car park all day. Um, people drive it to work. Um, it sits there and they drive it home, and then um, they're going to charge it um, using. Um, uh, using energy uh, at, at this peak time. And what you can see here is um, uh, increasing in uh, penetration of, of batteries, large scale batteries. Um, what's happening there is that that, that, that battery um, is being charged by solar during the day. It's doing some of that solar soaking. Um, but what if, if you think about what's happening there from a technology perspective, uh, you've got um, uh, local, um, uh, locally generated electricity being um, transported to, uh, a, you know, on transmission lines to uh, a large battery, then then that um, is then being exported back again um, and put into another battery uh, where it's going to be um, uh, at, at peak times at, at higher prices um, and it's going to be utilised uh, the, the next morning. Uh, it makes a lot more sense from a, um, a system perspective to facilitate um, uh, that um, excess solar energy to be, be put um, directly uh, into an EV. And anything you can do to facilitate that is going to um, make the um, electricity grid more efficient uh, in the long term. Um, and uh, I added this slide in um, as I was listening to uh, Elliot's presentation. Uh, this is something that uh, AMO is working on. Uh, what you can see here on the right-hand side is a, is a standard residential meter. Um, and what we've been working on um, just recently um, is uh, a, a, a much smaller uh, commercial meter that can be uh, uh, used uh, in um, commercial applications to facilitate AC charging. So um, this meter can e easily fit into the bottom of a power pole, in street furniture, um, and will facilitate um, uh, a, a wider spread um, commercial application of AC charging. Um, so that's, that, that's the, um, the totality of my presentation. I hope that's been useful, and I hope, hope you've got some questions for me. Thanks, Mike. That's great, and thank you for being lovely, t love, very time efficient with us. Um, so we've got, I can't see any questions on uh, hands up, but we've got one question in the chat from Vincent. Um, we'll go backwards. What are the some of the major regulatory policy levers that local government has an influence to help address the grid instability and mismatch of supply and demand? Sorry, I didn't see that question. Um, boom, boom, boom. It's the la very last question. Oh, uh, not. Shall I read it out again? Yeah, could you? Because it's yeah. not coming up on my chat. Okay. What are some of the major regulatory or policy levers that local government has an influence to help address the grid instability and mismatch of supply and demand? Okay, so um, look, uh, I, that's a that is a really challenging and interesting question. Um, one thing that that I would recommend is for um, local authorities in aggregate to engage with DNSPs um, to um, uh, add your voice to um, the way that um, the, the, the redesign of the energy uh, system uh, is implemented uh, for um, at, at, at the customer, in, at the user interface. Um, uh, to in, to give the representation um, of the the these sorts of use cases, so I I would um, recommend um, rather than the, than just join the queue um, for EV connections in 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 the normal way, I would I'd recommend uh, a, um, a, a you know a senior level approach to the Victorian DNSPs to open up that conversation. Um, 
and and that th that would be a really practical way to um, uh, shape and influence what's happening uh, in the energy transition. Great. Hopefully Thank that's you. a useful. I'm, and I'm I'm really happy um, offline to to, um, to see if I can facilitate that. Great. Um, if you could, could you unshare your screen so I can see more people? But while you do that, I'll oh, yeah. throw to Indy, who has their hand up. There we go. Uh, thanks, Mike. That was great. Uh, Indy from Yarra City Council in Melbourne. Just interested with the graph you showed, you know, about the batteries coming in. Of, like a lot of councils were working on, on yep. batteries and their role in supporting the grid um, and also with EVs as well as you're talking about. Will, at the moment, is it just like the big scale batteries that I think you mentioned that are being captured in that AMO energy data? And will small CR um, start to be captured, like, for example, EVs, you know, um, vehicle to grid and um, even behind the meter community batteries, those sort of things. Will that CER level of uh, discharge be captured? Is there um, some stage? Yes, abs absolutely. The, the plan is that, um, and, and it's already starting to happen, is that um, distributed energy resources in, in um, consumer-owned uh, batteries and e EVs um, will, um, uh, will be... Uh, included um, in the the resources um, that are managed to for the efficiency of the grid and the security of the grid. Um, so, uh, for example, um, uh, battery owners now um, can uh, participate in virtual power plants, um, and they can also um, participate uh, through uh, an agent in um, non-energy ancillary service. Um, arrangements um, for uh, frequency keeping um, and increasingly um, uh, these resources will become more visible and and more uh, managed um, uh, uh, so that the um, the grid um, starts to move from uh, a, a a central uh, utility scale um, supply paradigm to one where the resources are uh, uh, smaller but far more widely distributed. Um, yeah, great. I think that visibility yeah. is a really important yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, essentially yeah. mirroring, I guess, the integrated system plan that shows, you know, the consumer energy resources yeah, to so be able to show that to the community and, um, yeah. you know, council is really powerful. Correct. Yeah. Excellent. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm having trouble un unsharing, um, Jane. So you, you're right. We we can't. You've unshared as far as oh, I. Right. Okay, know. that's yeah. good. <laughs> that's great. Um, no, it's ten fifty-five, Mike. Do you have time for any more questions? Um, yeah, I, I I can I can um, stay uh, for a little while longer if if there are some more questions. All I'm right. So there's that. another one in the chat from uh, now, Victor. I've just lost yours. There it is. Given surplus. Of electricity during the day due to solar panels should we have differential pricing during the day versus during the night for charging evs um well i i, I would say so look i think um if if, uh, if for example in in car parking um long long-term car parking situations um if if the um if the infrastructure is um is designed efficiently, uh, and and you've got the the, the right level of inf infrastructure. Um, you, you won't be paying too much for that infrastructure. You should be actually receiving a credit for the electricity that that's being consumed, um, and and um, that that's being consumed during the day. Um, so in that respect, I think it's highly valuable to um, uh, ref you know reflect that in in the um, charging tariff. Uh, I've, I have been surprised um, by uh, charging infrastructure, public charging infrastructure in in South Australia, where there's a universal price. I am following that up with um, both SAPN, who's the um, distributor here, and also um, Adelaide City Council have installed it to say, "Hey, look, um, it'd be a really good idea if you, if you had differential pricing." Yeah. Thank you. And I think, was there another question from Vincent? 
Uh, so Vincent uh, says Kingston is planning to join United Energy and Power, uh, City Power oh, and yeah. Power Workshop. Workshop. Um, Excellent. Would be great to continue to get your input into how LGAs can advocate for shaping the custom use infrastructure. Yeah, but, um, yeah I'd be okay. really, really happy to um, uh, to catch up outside and have that discussion and maybe give you some insights be before you go along. Uh, uh, UE, City Power and Power Core are really active in this space. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd really encourage you all to um, uh, to engage with them um, and particularly talk about, I, I did see earlier on that you, you've got some uh, delays in um, facilitating connections. Uh, I think a, a, a group response um, so that, uh, you, you know, um, uh, these org organizations can, um, to, can really get on and facilitate um, EV charging. It's really important for them. It's very important for them. So um, I, I think, uh, you, you know, they, they would welcome, um, they'd welcome that. Great. Thank you. So thanks for coming along, Mark, and sharing your expertise and answering um, those questions. And um, we are going to let you go and move on to our next speaker. And apologies, everyone. I don't know what's happened, but I am now a black screen. So <laughs> I'm still here. Um, thanks. So thanks, we'll very, thanks very <laughs> much. Take care. See you. Bye-bye. See you. We're going to move on to our final um, presenter today, who is uh, Ross Durango, Head of Energy and Infrastructure.